Moving on quickly. We've got this post courtesy of the Berghain subreddit. Right, the Bergheim community subreddit, one of my favorite subreddits out there in terms of getting information specifically on the Bergheim, you know, club itself and also the wider Berlin city and what's happening there. Because it feels like on that sub, there's a few more locals, regulars, people that live there, blah, 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 whatever they want to call themselves. They all kind of exist in there. And some of the topics of conversation are a little bit more interesting than the mainstream techno subreddit, which is essentially turning into an EDM version of techno, which we can talk about at another time. But hey, we continue. This recent post here kind of peeved me off because this, for me, I feel like is an example of what I've been mentioning myself about the acceptance and the understanding that I am not the same flipping pill head, coke head, MDMA head, weed head, um, I don't know, meow meow head that I was in the past. I'm not that guy anymore. I can't handle that shit as much as I used to do in the past. I wish I could, but I cannot. So... I have to adapt, I have to change, I have to move, I have to move the way that I move, right, whatever it may be, and one of the things is, maybe kind of specking out my sessions once or twice a year, that's it at most, but for the most part, going to these parties, having a good dance, or nothing more than flipping good old coffee, good old water, and maybe some sparkling fucking water or something, regardless, nothing too crazy, fine, but <coughs> it's also an acceptance that the landscape in the clubs has changed, so at the moment, there's a real kind of battle of friction happening on the dance floors between millennials, I say, boom, millennials, maybe some boomers and the Gen Z kids, because these Gen Z kids are really different. I think so than a lot of millennials, because especially in London, I'm not sure about you guys, especially in London, the clubbing community of people, the clubbing community of people in London, especially the Gen Z kids, they're not as a uh, drug adult as some of us people in other generations they actually don't mind going out completely sober they actually don't mind going out listening for the going for the music they actually don't mind going out only to get their fits off and to look cool and to look cute and to show off this show off for makeup get some new clients blah 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 they're out there for all different reasons community building so if that's the case, naturally, they're going to change the landscapes of the clubs and they're going to move around and kind of operate differently. But I also don't agree with this post that says Gen Z's and their lack of etiquette. This person posted the following. It's rampant how obnoxious they get, even skipping the queue to get into the toilets, confronting people who are waiting. Am I the only one here who sees that most 18 to 25 year old people don't know how to share space with others? I completely disagree. I personally think the main people who are problems on dance floors are millennials, personally for me. Millennial queers, millennial gays, millennials in general are the worst people in that space, especially the people from the LGBTQ plus queer community because for some reason, which makes sense because of how the club is founded, but they take real ownership in, the, in that club, Burkham specifically. They feel like they own the place. They walk around like they own the place. Like, I've never been barged, shoulder checked in my life more than when I go to Bergheim. It's fucking crazy. You get spun around all times of places and usually you get spun around by super ripped and jacked gay guys who you know, if you tried it, they would absolutely pop your fucking head off your shoulders. So it's not even worth a fight. But they walk around barging you, you know, your drink falls out of your hand, your gear falls on the floor, you're there with your phone looking for it like a fucking crackhead. It's absolutely mad. But they're legitimately, I think, some of the worst vibish people in there. And most of the time also, because it's a big club, it's a super club. It's a, one of the best clubs in the world. You're going to attract sometimes some dodgy people here and there. It's the name of the game. It's just unfortunate because so many thousands of people cross through those doors every single weekend. But some of the times, I reckon, you can avoid some of the shitty people if you avoid going to the bait nights, like the public holidays, um, the end of year celebrations, whatever it may be, right? The Easter's, the New Year's Eve, all those things, you can avoid meeting those crowds if you kind of don't go to those ones or don't go to the bait lineups. When you go to random club nacks, random club nights over there, it's fucking cool, fucking chill. No one's harassing you. Everyone's all right. So this idea that it's always like this is a bit mad. But we continue and read some of the accounts of people and how they think Gen Z's are the issue when I think actually it's millennials. First person says, I'm Gen Z and I cannot agree more. 
Whenever anyone does uh, misbehave, it's guaranteed to be someone my age. It's shameful. One of the main reasons why I go to Bergheim more than any other place like Trezor or something is that the door policy does filter out a significant chunk of people, black, <laughs> who are bad for the vibe and also my age. I'm fearful of going to with anyone but my one rave buddy because the lack of humility in people my age is astounding. And I don't mean to sound uppity or snobbish, but it's definitely noticeable. As every Everybody in this Fred sound sec, uh, seconds. I would, however, ask one thing: don't immediately look at people at my age and think that we're all cunts. Chances are we are, but not always. Give us a chance. I don't think that's personally true. I think I've met more chill, safe Gen Z kids than I've met millennials in nightclubs, and I'm gonna fucking put my hat on that. Gen Z kids are actually kind of cool. Maybe they inter interact with the spaces differently maybe they do care about their image maybe they are walking around a little bit more with their shoulders high with their shoulders back and their chest high and their chin high and shit cool maybe that's a little bit annoying i understand it but also my kind of underlying point is this i think in general if you get to the point of start complaining about the patrons who you know are going to be the next generation of people to kind of use that space i think that's an indication that you're the one you're the one that's expired. You're the one that's old as fuck. You're the one that needs to hang it up. If you're complaining about Gen Z kids in there, because unfortunately, those kids are young. They're only going to get younger, they, especially with more access to the information and to resources out there. They're going to start getting involved in the scene younger, younger, younger than, than we were. And they're going to start taking over, putting on their nights, becoming DJs, becoming artists, working in the industry. And slowly but surely, it will all filter out the oldies. So if you're an old person that's complaining about the Gen Z kids, that for me, like what I noticed the other day, where I was like, fuck, I'm having a three day hangover. That might mean I have to fucking quick the gear. That is another representation, another kind of example, another kind of, yeah, another example that you can find that maybe isn't as harmful as taking drugs and then finding you can't do it. But it's definitely a clear example that life is giving you that you need to hang it up. You're the problem, not the Gen Z kids. That's my opinion. Another one per says, um, let's continue here. Another one says, couldn't agree more. It's hard to, to be reduced to one's age, but I can't blame the ones that do. Another one. Um, anyone says, uh, it's apparently very much a thing. I, of course, know some lovely people in that age range, but social media, especially TikTok, has created a monster of entitlement and complete lack of community. I disagree. The entitlement already exists through the nature of the fucking club. They select you at the door. They say you can come in, you can't come in. As soon as you walk through that door, you believe deep down, I know I do, of course I can come in. I'm entitled. I'm cool. You start to fucking gas yourself up once you get through those doors. Once you start getting searched. Once you start emptying your shit in the fucking bins. Once you start getting a sticker on your phone. When you start paying. Once you start going to the freaking cloakroom. Or as you walk up to the stairs. You start thinking you're one of the chosen ones. So that club by its design, by its nature, has already given you a warped sense of fucking self-importance. It's no surprise that people are like that. And community, come on, do me a favour. People don't care about community in there. There are some rare occasions when you're on a Berkheim dance floor, panorama dance floor, giving it the business where you connect with people. You're dancing with people around you and you feel like you're all one fucking hive mind. You're all one joining together, going left and right, throbbing your arms in the air. Yes, that does happen. But for the most part, everyone's existing in their own little bubbles anyway. There's no fucking community. It's a nightclub. It's fucking dark. People are behind fucking curtains, jacking each other off, fingering each other swapping saliva they don't want to talk to you they're at the bar getting drinks with their friends they don't want to talk to you they're in the toilets doing their flipping lines they don't want to talk to you there is no community you go there to enjoy the music to see the djs to maybe be a part of something but community come on come on come on come on doesn't exist anyway it continues it's about looking hotter than everybody else doing the most drugs, lack of compassion for those around you. I think the drugs thing is not true either because look at that guy who recently was complaining and crying about the clubs in Berlin. The black dude, I forgot his name. He got chucked out, I think of Else and stuff and started complaining and then obviously the story transpired that he was a fucking GHB addict. So maybe Else had a reason for checking, chucking him out in the first place. I think most of the people who are real GHB fiends and who are flipping toxifying and zombifying the dance floors, I would hazard a guess most of them are millennials. I don't see a lot of Gen Z kids getting super addicted to GHB. 
personally. Maybe it's just me. It continues. It's about looking hotter than anybody, um, doing the most drugs, lack of compassion for those around you, etc. As somebody who takes club etiquette very seriously, imagine saying that about yourself with 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 confidence. That's hilarious. Um, it really gets to me. A lot of last club nights I've been to have felt quite cold in terms of the previous mentioned things. That's why it's always a pleasure when you get those nights where the club or the crowd is super nice, make space, isn't completely cooked um and you can actually get in a damn toilet within an hour not sure much can be done without different selection though i also add due to the economic reasons i'm more put off trying as often as i would do paying 25 euros to end up having a not so night not so good night when i know how good it can be it's quite disheartening the place is how it is it's changed over the years i know it having been going 10 plus years i know it's annoying but you have to adapt and evolve with the change of the club or find somewhere else to go that's the beauty of the clubbing landscape especially in a city like berlin there's no shortage of clubs you can go to that can scratch your itch now is it disappointing that the one place that you kind of saw as your introduction to the scene the one place that you saw as a quote-unquote safe space is kind of turning to shit yeah but like i said if you avoid all the bait nights all the public holiday nights and you try and go on the off nights, the, one, the nights where the lineup isn't super stacked with famous DJs and just have loads of heads and local people on it. Usually, those are the fun ones to go to. But no one wants to go to those ones. Why? Because all the cool kids aren't there. There's not massive queues. You can just walk in when you want. That's the issue at hand, really, underlying it. And also, if you have to go to a nightclub and you start complaining about the patrons, maybe it's your opportunity to stay at home. Maybe. Another one says, Last one, sums up my experience this weekend after a five year break, young groups with too much effort on stylish outfits, but not enough on friendly attitude, jumping the queue, refusing to let solo women to pee first, taking ages to take their drugs. That wasn't bad or common enough to ruin the day, but it did, I did remember this isn't in Berkheim. I guess I'm old. Yes, you are. All this door policy for this result is a bit disappointing. When it comes to queue jumping in Berkheim, I think people are too polite and are being pussies. When I'm queuing outside of that club, nobody is jumping in front of me. I've had full on arguments, near on fights in the queue because somebody's jumping in front of me. But I always have, you know, it's a thing that I've always had, a trigger when it comes to queuing. Maybe because of my history of fucking buying limited edition shoes and queuing outside of Bape, queuing outside of Supreme and Foot Patrol. Maybe that's a residue of that, of being fucking mugged over by older people that would pull up in their cars and be friends with the store staff and shake their hands and jump in front. So maybe since those days, I've been like, you know what? No one's ever jumping in front of me in the queue but in general when it comes to the Bergkind queue one of the longest fucking club queues in the world sometimes you can wait there as short as zero minutes and as long as fucking four hours like I did one time it's unacceptable for people to jump in front of you that's a complete lack of respect for the people around you for yourself and the club overall that's not the ethos of what the club promotes bloody blah, blah 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 in the past in the past there was a time where the fucking bouncers would leave the door, the security of Berkheim, and they would walk down the queue, at least to the top of where the spetty is, right? The little kind of little fucking thing where you can buy beer from. They would walk up until there, just kind of checking the queue and making sure nobody's jumping in. There was a time they did that. Obviously, since the pandemic, you know, whatever, things have changed. They're concentrating their resources in the actual club that can actually control. So people are taking a piss more with the queue. But, if you let somebody jump in front of you in a queue, it's your fucking fault. Because if it's me and somebody's jumping in front of me in a queue, it's going to ruin my night if I don't say something. I have to say something. And I would rather risk getting denied entry than having some fucking cunt wake up four hours after I've been standing for four hours in the fucking queue and just jump in front of me because they can't be bothered to wait. You have to set the precedent and stamp that shit out. And I think too much people are too polite they're too scared of getting refused at the door that they don't tell somebody, hey, you were you you jumped in. I've tapped people on the shoulder, like tap them style, hard. Hey, get to the back, you jumped in. Or sometimes I won't even say something. They jump in front of me, I walk in front of them. Standard. Like it's not happening. You're not jumping in front of me. So if you let that shit happen, you always happen to yourself. The toilet etiquette thing, I kind of agree. People do take the piss in the toilet. Mostly because they're all high and shit. So they're having fucking UN conventions in the toilet and talking about how they can cure, you know, they can fucking, you know, 
be the bastions of fucking world peace and shit and end the war in Ukraine. That's really annoying. But to be honest, it's the drugs. And if it is the drugs, there's always that toilet downstairs near the reception or near the fucking cloakroom that people usually go to if you want to piss and shit, actually. It's a little toilet. I think it's actually on the way to the garden. There's a really nice sort of toilet in there that has those really nice LED bars on the side of the loo. Those are ones that you should go to and they're usually cleaner. And for the most part, it's an unwritten rule in those toilets that you don't do drugs. You go there only to piss and shit. Cool. But the rest of it, if you're letting people spoil your mood by jumping in the queue before you, it's really your fault, in my own personal opinion. That's the only thing that I would say. And I think in general, like I said, just to end this point, if you're in a club and you start complaining about the kids in there, I think it's time for you to go and get a new hobby, take up golf, take up pool, go hang out with your fucking kids, do something as opposed to doing all that stuff because clearly, clearly there's an issue going on there.